Welcome traders to this week's live uh, market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Runnelly. Um, before I begin, if you can hear me and you can see the Tickmill welcome screen, just type a Y in the chat box. So I know that we are uh, we're good to go. Testing audio, one, two, three. Okay, good stuff, thanks. Um, right. So before we get started, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer and uh, the most important aspect of it for uh, today's purposes are the opinions and views expressed by me today are solely mine and they're not indicative of or representative of Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Um, before I get going, uh, also just note that if you do have any questions with respect to any of the uh, charts that we're going to review today, if you could uh, make a note of them and at the end I'll open up a Q&A session, brief Q&A. Equally, if there's a chart I don't review during the session and you'd like me to take a look at, then you can just drop that into the chat box and I'll, uh, I'll do so at the end. So for those of you who are here for the first time today, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from King's College London, I joined the City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found an exit, a consulting startup, which was focused on uh, C-suite executive search for tech startups. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets quite literally overnight at times, I decided to explore my curiosity for the markets. With some capital to play with and some time in my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500 or more appropriately day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. As the market phase changed, I began to average down into positions, eventually giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a six-figure uh, hit on my personal capital. To say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for 18 months to two years, uh, this was a period during which I had not just my technical game in terms of developing uh, strategies that crucially suited my personality, which I researched, developed extensively back and forward tested. Uh, it was a period also uh, during which I upped my my, I guess my tech, my mental game, and probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-oriented. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But... Once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand and embrace the true nature of trading, being a numbers game in which you are simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and the hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, from 2013, I also uh, have been managing investor capital through a managed account service. It's delivering annual positive returns, I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, uh, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill. Uh, my other passion project, I guess, is as uh, the leading uh, trade education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We offer development and funding to retail trading talent. At fxcareerswap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And if you're interested in learning more about fxcareerswap, there's a number here for trade desk in London, or you can drop them an email and they'll come back to you with details uh, about FX Career Swap. 
Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into the charts. We've got some interesting uh, setups to look at this week. We'll do something slightly different as well. We're using the four hour time frame, and I've stripped the charts back. Um, sometimes, especially if, if traders are, are, are struggling, it's useful to go right back to the basics. So that's what we're going to do this week. I'm just going to uh, run through some of the basic patterns that I see developing that offer opportunity. I'll overlay some more details and you can see the thought process. And, uh, and I'll introduce you to this uh, the four hour entry strategy um, using the, the VWAP and the psych indicator as well as an additional confirmation to, uh, to pull the trigger on the trade. So we're going to start here with the, um, the equal weighted dollar index. So this is the dollar versus uh, four currencies, the euro, sterling, yen and the Aussie. And that's on an equal weighted basis. So um, they all have equal weighting as opposed to the difference in the, the broader dollar index against six currencies. Uh, some of the major currencies aren't actually included in that basket. And so it's useful to, to take a look at this dollar index. Uh, the, the, what you're seeing with the candles here in terms of the coloring, you'll know that some of these on normal charts would be red, but they're green. And some of them are red when they should be green. Um, they're basically, there'll be green candles when price is trading above the five period volume weighted average price on the daily time frame. Okay, so they'll only be green if price is trading above that average on the daily time frame. Obviously, we're on the four hour time frame. Um, so that's just to clarify why you're seeing uh, some different color candles here to what you'd normally expect. This is just to give us an idea of the higher time frame trend, which is the daily time frame, and how we can align with that using these four hour candles to try and improve our risk reward in terms of entering uh, positions. So what we've got here is the dollar index. Um, we had a low put in at uh, back end of February, and then we advanced in a impulsive fashion to the upside. And so what that sets up there, normally what you'd be looking for would be a corrective move. And I use uh, this tool, trend, fib based trend tool. So you, what, you'd, what you'd anticipate is an equal legs corrective move. So we had the initial um, move off the lows, and we can see here, let's just bring this up there, that down there. What we would have anticipated if, uh, if we were in a, a normal corrective pattern would be that we would make a low, uh, a reaction low, a reaction high, and then we'd look for an equal legs objective to the downside. These measurements here are basically giving you the 100% extension of this swing here as, uh, as identified as, as a downside target. So that's 100%. Uh, this is the 161 extension. So if price exceeds the 161 extension, that often is a warning or a, a potential flag that the, the trend is actually changing. So we had this advance, obviously we have been in a downdraft in terms of the dollar index. And um, the, we've also got the equal legs measure here off that low, which we traded into. And we then did another correction. Um, and what we would have anticipated was we would have got a double corrective pattern play out, but we didn't get that and we've rolled over here and we've exceeded the 161 extension to the downside. And we're now in a, what is a clearly defined uh, trend channel. And so what we're looking for is uh, two pieces of information we're gonna get here from the channel. If we hold the channel, we know that this, uh, this new move to the downside has got momentum and we, we'd be looking for short positions. To enter short positions, what you'd be looking for using this strategy would be the next red candle that closes and the next time in unison with that, we get a red uh, close on the psych indicator. So for example, if this, if this was uh, the price pattern that we were looking at, obviously this has already happened, but I'm just showing you for um, demonstration purposes. Once you get this red, you get a red candle here and you get the red close on the psych indicator, that is what you would use as your entry candle. So what we're basically saying is the daily, the daily time frame has, has now shifted, the higher time frame has now shifted short and the momentum on, the, uh, on, this, on this chart has, is also moving to the downside. So you're looking for that alignment to put the, uh, to put the position on. So what we've been watching for now with, um, with the dollar index here is, do we get a, a reversal from the trend line resistance? And at that point, do we get a cross below the, uh, below the zero line here on the psych indicator? Uh, so we get a red candle and a red flip on the psych indicator, which then would be a high probability uh, confluence that we are starting another leg 
to the downside in terms of the dollar index. Conversely here now, if we hold these current lows, as we are trading into, as you can see, just eyeballing the chart here, an area of prior support, um, and we are testing that. We have found buyers. We did get a reversal, a strong reversal, and we got the psych indicator confirming that. Conversely now, if we can break the channel resistance, what we watch for in terms of a, a trading opportunity or a, a, an opportunity to trade the dollar to the long side would be a reversal. Um, so it, let's say we trade up into this zone, we get a pullback to retest the broken trend channel from above. Um, and then what we get is the next reversal to the upside where we have the confluence again. So we'd be moving from, the, on the pullback, we'd anticipate that the candles um, turn to red. Psych indicator is, is down below the zero line, so also red, so confirming the pullback. Once we get that test of the trend line from above, then what we'd be looking for is the green candle, to a, a, a reaction from the trend line where we get green candles and we get the site back above the zero line. And that would suggest we could see another leg to the upside in terms of the dollar. Have I explained that clearly? Does that make sense in terms of the, uh, the, the combination here of the candlestick coloring and the, um, and the site indicator to confirm an entry opportunity? I just want to make sure that uh, I haven't gone through that too quickly. Um, you can get an this session is recorded, so you can have an opportunity to uh, to watch it back. So, with respect to the dollar index at the moment, or the, the equal weighted dollar index, we're watching very closely what price does now at this trend line. Yesterday, we had uh, CPI data coming out, and as I'm sure many of you are aware, it was a big surprise to the upside, and that's what's seen this support in terms of the dollar as the market now believes that they're, the Fed are under pressure and that they should be thinking about, or at least. Uh, intimate, implying to the market that there is that tapering is coming. Obviously, Jerome Powell has been adamant that, that isn't the case, but we'll wait and see because the market is clearly now forcing that that notion. So, if we do get the break, watch for the next rotation back into back from red to green, uh, with the green side as an opportunity on the upside. But equally, if we hold this trend line resistance, um, then we'd be watching for the first red candle to close with the, the site back below the zero line as an opportunity to get in on the short side. And what you'd be looking for is a re, ideally you'd be targeting certainly uh, a retest of the trend line from uh, from above here as projected to the downside and more, <coughs> more likely that we would take out the lows in terms of the dollar index. So we're at a clear inflection point here with the dollar. Um, if we look at the euro, we've got a similar story developing there. <coughs> The euro had uh, had a nice fight, fight, nice advance, an impulsive advance off the lows. We did uh, we had a corrective move here into trend line support, and you can see that the, uh, the this, this this system would have given you a long signal here uh, through one twenty fifty, and um, and you would have taken you would have basically. Uh, if you waited for the system to reverse, you would have basically been out at scratch on that trade. But what we're looking for now is this trend line support test here. So if you're watching uh, this, this area of, of support, we can see we're reversing here. And on normal candlestick chart, this, this candle would be green, but we're waiting for uh, the, we'd be waiting for the site to go back through the zero line and, uh, and for a green candle to close before getting in on the long side. Now, if the euro is going to is going to hold this trend line support, then the next objective in terms of the upside will be a, a test of this ascending trend line resistance, which comes back in uh, currently around 122.68. So, but equally, if we break this um, trend line support, and similar to the dollar index idea, what you'd be watching for is a retest, let's say we get into this area, and then the retest of the trend channel from below, and then you wait for that next red candle and the site to go red to play for a deeper corrective pattern in terms of the euro uh, to the downside. Sterling, <coughs> Sterling came into its uh, trend channel resistance. It has um, an equal leg objective which is completed so versus this move here off the lows into that reaction high we then had a three-way corrective pattern we've now done a potential double correction here into this trend line resistance because we're still whole we still haven't taken out these prior highs here this prior cycle high so this can just be the start of a more complex corrective pattern in terms of sterling um, and we've 
come into, let's bring in this big retracement tool. So we're at the 78.6% retracement, and we have this equal legs objective, and we're seeing uh, some sell side pressure come in here. So if um, if we can follow this, this, this strategy gives the signal on this candle uh, as a short, and what you'd be looking at for a target will be this uh, ascending trend line support down to 38.96, and see how the uh, see how price responds when we get down there. Dolly Yen held um, held the trend line support area. Let me just move that so you can see what I'm looking at here. And so now, versus this swing low here in the dollar yen, and you can see the strategy with triggers long here uh, through that 108.90. You've got the site green. You've got the green uh, green candle combination. The the, equip, the the objective for this trade will actually be the equal leg. So we're looking in terms of this leg up here, overlaid here. So you've got a target now in terms of the dollar yen at 110.54. And equally, if we, do, if we get a pullback here, or just, uh, just for the purposes of the strategy, if you get a pullback here in, and you get a red, couple of red candles here, get the site back down below the zero line so it goes red, the next green rotation you get, as long as we're trading above this uh, 108.33 level, will be an opportunity to either initiate new longs or add to long positions for that 110.54 target zone. Aussie has uh, taken, well, it's, it's in the process potentially here of taking out its trend line support. And we could have on a, a higher time frame, uh, oh, sorry, on the higher scale here, we could have big head and shoulders scenario developing in the Aussie. So what we look for here now in terms of the Aussie to try, if, if we are gonna break down um, and We've yet to see. We, we did get. We have had one close uh, through that trend line. Two closes would be a, a great confirmation. If we do get a break down there, then again, what we're watching for will be the next rotation back into uh, green. Ideally, we get a retest of this trend channel from below. Wait for the next red rotation, and then you get in on the short side. And certainly, you can be thinking about a neckline test here of what would be that big head and shoulders scenario. Equally, we can then look at measuring bigger corrective pattern, which would have a downside target at 74.17. And again, once we get there, if, uh, if buyers don't, don't show up, then what you can think about is the, uh, the head and shoulders target. So you'd have a head and shoulders target down to uh, 7240. Um, so this, this is a very interesting point we're at with the, the Australian dollar here. And bet given in mind where the dollar index sits at the moment, so we want to watch to see if we break down here, or do we get a snapback now and a close back into the trend channel and we get site flip green, then that would also that equally would give us an opportunity on the long side to again target the top side. Of the uh, of the channel there, so inflection point really for uh, for a lot of these dollar majors at the moment. Kiwi. So similar story here, testing the trend channel, uh, trend line support for the fourth time. The, th the third test is normally the high probability scenario. The fourth time tends to see these things break, but we'll see. We've had one looking for a second close really through this trend line support. And, um, and again, you, in terms of thinking about getting into this trade now, you'd be looking for that next rotation from red, uh, sorry, from green, uh, sorry, from red to green, back to red. And ideally, like I say, you, you, these high probability scenarios that you retest the trend channel from below, and then you can think about the extension to the downside. And again, with this one, very simple. What we're looking for is an equal legs objective which would put us down into 67.83 for, uh, for the Kiwi there. But likewise with the, uh, with the Aussie, a, a snapback here and a green close back through into the trend channel and, uh, and a green rotation here in terms of the psych indicator, then you could be thinking about upside opportunities in terms of the Kiwi. Looney has... Uh, Come into a big equal legs objective here. Let me just show you where this is measured from. So from 
from this high, so this swing into this swing here is an equal legs objective. We hit it pretty much to the tick yesterday, 120.50. We've seen a nice bounce here. We've got a green candle piercing the trend line, resist, uh, trend line resistance. And we've got that green turn in sight. So that's a, a, a signal there using this strategy. And um, what you'd be looking for now would be a three-way corrective pattern to develop. It's difficult to measure at the moment, but what you can do quite easily to give you some senses uh, in terms of where we could find resistance is overlaying that last big swing here off this peak. And, uh, and that was just 122.28, could be a resistance zone. So you want to pay attention to, to how prices respond there. Equally, if we get a red close here back in to the trend line, then, uh, then this would look like a false break and we could have another leg setting up to the downside. Dollar Swiss coming back into its trend line resistance and again starting to, uh, to look like it's under pressure here. So what we'd be looking for, and this obviously fits in with the Euro and the, um, and the dollar index, um, is a, a red rotation here. So the next red candle on a red uh, close here uh, through with the site back through the zero line would be, uh, would be suggesting downside. And, uh, and we could certainly be thinking about a retest of the lows here. Well, initially what you're looking at is the trend channel. So you anticipate a move down into the trend channel support, maybe then a rotation, and then another leg to the downside to actually get a retest of the lows there in terms of the Swissy. Equally, if we can break to the top side here, get through this trend, uh, trend channel resistance, then the next rotation um, from uh, green to red, back to green, would, uh, would give you an opportunity uh, on the long side and suggest that we could see uh, some upside. But at the moment, without breaking these trend channels meaningfully, it looks like uh, that we could see another leg of downside. Sterling Yen, nothing to, uh, nothing to do there at the moment. We'd be looking, I'm not, what, what I'm paying attention to in the Sterling Yen is a, a test of this trend line. So uh, what, what I wanted, what I anticipate is we see some something like this and get into this 155 area and then I'll be paying close attention to the, uh, the next downside rotation as an opportunity on the short side in terms of sterling yen. Similar type of scenario in terms of the euro yen, it's getting even more squeezed here in this, uh, this ascending wedge pattern. So what I'd watch for is a break of the trend line uh, support with a red candle um, uh, and a red close in terms of psych as an opportunity on the short side. Notice here as well, We've got plenty of divergence developing now. So uh, that also is a great uh, confirmation tool of looking for these, these corrective moves to, uh, to play out. Aussie Yen, similar story here. <coughs> we've taken out the trend line support and, uh, and we've, got the, we've got confirmation, the red candles, we've got red sites. So watch for potential here for the Aussie Yen to roll over, especially we're going to look at a minute in some of these equity indexes and see where we are um, from a risk perspective. CAD yen is another one that's getting really tight now in, uh, in, its, in its pattern. So what we're looking for is a break of the trend line support. We've got, again, plenty of divergence, we've got triple divergence here. So if we look, we've got the CAD making one peak, two peaks, three peaks, and we've got triple divergence here in terms of uh, the potential for a reversal to play out here. So what we'll be watching for is a break of the trend line, red candle close, uh, side back below the zero line, and, uh, and that would be an opportunity on the short side. And certainly in terms of targets, initially thinking about where we could rotate to, uh, if we bring in the fit tool, <coughs> Thinking about here, first port of call would be the 23.6% uh, retracement. So that brings us back down into 89.39. But more often than not, we get that 38.2% retracement. 88.64 would be uh, maybe two downside objectives to pay attention to. Let's take a look at these equity indexes. <coughs> so the S&P, if we zoom right out here, and I'll show you what we're looking at. This is uh, an internal trend line that's uh, being respected and we're testing it here now and we are finding um, some support, initial support anyway. And so if we are going to 
uh, going to see a rotation here, then what we'd be looking for is obviously sight back through the zero line, green candle, and then uh, the, the initial target on this would be the halfway back of this leg because this leg at the moment looks impul impulsive. So we could see a move back into the uh, 41, uh, 41.39 area, and that would then potentially set up the second leg of downside. So ideally what we'd see is a three wave corrective move here like this into this resistance zone. Let me redraw that for you. So three way corrective move, get into the resistance zone here. And then we'd look for an equal leg move um, to the downside to complete this much bigger corrective pattern. So um, you can see that will give us equal legs there like that. So this would be the ideal scenario that we'd see play out. Um, equally what we have, if we, if we continue in, a, in almost like a straight down move here, uh, if we don't find support, then what I'd be watching for is this symmetry swing. So this is this corrective leg here overlaid versus our current high. So that would suggest that we get a test of uh, the 4,000 4, level and that coincides with the trend line. Let me get rid of that one for now. that coincides with this internal trend line. It would be the fourth test, so you'd have to be careful, but certainly I pay attention to any reversal patterns there uh, with, the, with the additional confirmation of the, the VWAP and the psych. Um, but at the moment, we, uh, we look like we're trying to, to put in a base here, and I would suggest that this would be, this would be completing this, uh, this initial impulse leg to the downside, and we'd still have more work to do after, uh, after a corrective squeeze here higher. Dow Jones, <coughs> now it's come into its symmetry swing support, exceeded it by a tick, well, not by a tick, by, by, by a little bit here, but you can see we're now finding support and the potential to, uh, to try and reverse here. Again, because of the nature of this move, I would anticipate that we would be looking for a three wave corrective move before getting another leg to the downside to ultimately test this trend line. This is the trend line um, in terms of the Dow off the, off the lows here. Let's just zoom out. So that's the trend line going back to the March lows. So this is gonna be a pivotal area because if we break there, then, uh, then we could certainly have some more work to do on the downside. And you know, seasonally, uh, May, the, the old adage, seven it may go away. This isn't a particularly strong period of time for equity uh, performance. So we to pay very close attention to these, uh, these major trend lines because they could inform us as to what the, likely, uh, what the likely price action is going to be. But we are holding in around this symmetry swing here. Uh, equally, what you can do is if we do start to roll over, then you go back to the next largest uh, swing. Let me just show you how you do this. So we'd be thinking then about this swing here, and that would give you the target for um, this potential move to the downside. And if we do an equal legs here versus the current swing low, again, we don't know where we're going to correct to um, on the upside. But if, if we get a scenario whereby the equal legs maps into this symmetry swing support, that's a high probability area where we could, uh, we could look to see a bounce in terms of the, the Dow. NASDAQ uh, exceeded its equal legs. I highlighted this, uh, this one yesterday. We didn't get confirmation um, using this strategy to, uh, to get in on the long side and we eventually did roll over. We're now holding uh, the next support zone here using the um, extension tool and trying to put in a reversal. And again, because of the nature of the price action, I would suggest that we, you know, we might get something back into this 13,400 level but I would think we have uh, another leg to do on the downside in terms of the uh, in terms of the Nasdaq there. DAX, this is an interesting one. I, uh, I put this out earlier. We've uh, we've got an X uh, WXY equal legs came just shy of it at 40, uh, 14,789. And we're now putting in a decent reversal here. Now, this could give a trigger on the long side, um, either at this candle close or the next candle close, if we can get a green on, uh, on the psychic back through the zero line and a green candle 
then this would actually be an opportunity on the long side because technically we've completed a, a, a solid corrective pattern here and that would, uh, that would give a trigger on the long side. And the target for that move would be the wave five here as an equality objective. Let me just show you how we get that. So we have our target from there overlaid here. So we'd be looking for a move up just shy of towards the 16,000 area. So this is one that's gonna be active um, and I'll be watching this as, uh, as an opportunity on the long side because we completed a, a, a corrective structure. This, uh, this one looks like it, uh, like it has an opportunity developing. Nikkei broke out of its triangle support uh, and ca has come down into its equal legs target versus this swing high here and uh, is trying to find support, but we'd re I wouldn't be touching this now until we get back within, uh, back above this resistance zone here, uh, 28,400. I think that's gonna be pretty uh, pretty tricky for, um, for the Nikkei to get through on the first time of asking anyway, or we might be doing this type of uh, pattern here with the Nikkei. So uh, I'm not looking, not looking to be active there. Check in with gold. Still in its ascending trend line. Uh, this is the daily trend line I highlighted in, uh, in a, a few uh, in a chart here that I did. Watch, watch how we trade here. So if we can hold this current support, I think we get up and into here. And I'd be very interested to see what sort of response we get there because I think that could set up. A, uh, a deeper corrective move in terms of gold, and then we'll establish whether or not we're uh, we're going to move meaningfully higher. So I'm paying very close attention to this 1858 to 1860 area, and uh, and I think we could uh, we could see a rollover from there. Silver <laughs> in its trend channel, uh, respecting it nicely. So watch if we get a green uh, green psych here and a green candle then I think there's an opportunity on the long side. Certainly think about te testing the uh, sending trend line resistance coming in just above the $28 level. Uh, last but not least, let's take a look at Sterling Cow. This is one I'm watching as an opportunity on the long side. So we had the move off the lows, which uh, was a big equality objective. So this swing into here, measured down here, we tested it to the pip and got a nice response, an initial response higher. Uh, we've now pulled back. So what I'm watching for now will be the next rotation for a green candle and a green psych to set up the, at least a three wave corrective move versus wherever we get our low measured against our current reaction high. So currently the target would be 73. And that also coincides with symmetry swing resistance versus this swing here overlaid here. So that comes in at 72.84. So we've got some nice confluence there. And what I'd really like to see is uh, the, neck, the green candle and the green side rotation come on a break of the trend line. And I'll be looking to, uh, to get long the Sterling CAD here targeting that 73 area. So that was a whistle stop tour here of, the, of uh, some of the opportunities I'm seeing on the four hour charts, employing a nice simple uh, trend strategy to, uh, to get into, into trades with a, a double confirmation. Um, and I hope you found that, uh, that useful. Are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have any questions, and I've done a spectacular job of explaining all of that, if you could type an N in the chat box so I know that we're, uh, we're all on the same page. <clears throat> okay, good stuff, everyone. Well, uh, keep an eye now on these, uh, these, these next two hour closes. Uh, we've got a question here. No. Okay. Uh, keep an eye on these these trend lines and these dollar majors. That's it's they're going to be pivotal uh, for defining the uh, the next phase of price action here. And certainly that uh, that equal weighted dollar index sitting at the trend line that can inform you about how you can play the the yen, the sterling, the euro, and the Aussie. So uh, important test here of the trend line. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, quick question. Good data for the US today. Um, I don't. I don't see today's data having as much impact as as the CPI. The CPI is really uh, was the key one today. 
I'd watch retail sales tomorrow. That uh, that might give uh, might be a bit more informative. I think people. I think the reaction yesterday in the market we saw that two way whip. I think that was people really digesting uh, the current data set and then trying to think about where we head from here. But what we what you've got to factor at the moment is this this upside pressure we're seeing in the dollar is driven by the idea that you know we've got inflation, rates are moving higher. Check in here with the. Uh, the ten-year uh, ten-year Treasury one sixty nine. Um, so the this this is this is what's driving the dollar move at the moment. The idea that you know inflation is here to stay and it's not trans transitory like uh, the the Fed believe. But um, you know it, it's you can see that the indecision in the markets being driven by this. You know is this inflation transitory? Was it to be expected because economies have been winding down simultaneously and now they're slowly opening back up? And so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a bit more of a wait wait and see. Certainly, with respect to um, you know the, vi the, the virus, you know, are, are, are we going to see mutant strains come out into uh, the back end of summer? And if if that's the case, then it's going to be jitters again about uh, e economies facing restrictions, etc. So it, the, the market it, it's it, we're we're at, a, we're at an inflection point here, and you can see it in the charts. So I would uh, I would just follow the charts at this stage, at this stage, especially when we get to these areas where the, a bunch of these major charts are all <coughs> at these similar inflection points. It will be uh, it will be telling to see if we either break or hold in terms of the uh, the next phase. Okay, I'm going to wrap this one up here, and uh, we will reconvene at the same time next week. All the best, traders. Thanks very much.